My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop. So, we haven't done some theory videos stuff in a long time, so let's do some theory stuff in a long time. Oh god, that was quite a bit of a bang, wasn't it? Fucking hell. <laughs> Maybe because it's warm in there. <sighs> My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop. And um, today we're going to talk uh, about two things. So, so someone asked me a question and it said um, it was basically asking did I take a screenshot of it? I think I did. Ah yes. So basically he was asking uh, if you have a cylinder like this and you have a piston in it like this um, and the piston is on its way up to TDC and then you have a moment later uh, another piston or the same piston on its way down towards BDC he was saying that uh, all of the energy that is used to force this piston to the top of the stroke um, is recovered when the piston comes back down. I was talking about pumping losses and no, that's not correct. So basically if you could measure the energy of it coming down and the energy of it going up, so the energy there and the energy there, they would not be equal. So equal they would not be at all. And the reason why is because um, of losses. Any time you do any kind of work, so work is force, sorry, so work is um, a force multiplied by, and we should do that one, by a distance or displacement, whichever way you want to write it, that kind of thing. What does this mean? Well, what this means is our stroke and we don't actually need to know our force, instead we can take the other bit that this is, which is mass times acceleration, right? So we know we're accelerating it because we're going from zero to whatever speed it is in the middle to stopping at the top. So there's an acceleration, a deceleration. It's all a change in velocity, right? So we can forget the acceleration bit just for the time being. What we can look at is it's really this right work is moving a mass over a distance mass over a distance right that's what we can think about and our mass is our piston so we can put our mass in here and we can put our stroke in there as our distance so we're all good now um there is also the time factor now, someone's going to say, no, it's force, so it's mass times acceleration times the distance. That is work, right? And it's power is a measurement of the mass times the acceleration times the distance over time. Well, the thing is, in the real world... <laughs> Work is a concept, it isn't really a thing, right? Work isn't a thing. Um, it is just a concept to get your head around things because you cannot accelerate anything without time, seeing as though an acceleration, you know, is a change in velocity, so it's a delta V over time, right? So you can't accelerate because acceleration is in meters per second squared right it is it already has that time function in there right so really what's going on in here is that you just call it mass right it's a mass over a distance right and then with your acceleration because you always have to have acceleration for there to be a force and everything takes time you can't do work you can't get from here and to here instantaneously that's breaking causality and all sorts of shite right? don't worry about that so 
if you move a mass, a displacement, work has been done. And every time work is done, there's always waste heat. Always waste heat. Always. Give you a couple of examples. Let's just say we have this tub of goo, right? And I push it. Right, that is a mass being accelerated, so there's a force being applied to it over said distance, this distance here. When I do that, there are two forms of waste heat here. Now, number one you'll, is, is obvious, you can see it's scratched half the shit off here. Number one is the friction, you can see it on the bottom of the tub. Number one is friction, that is waste heat. So, the friction between this surface and the tub has pissed away into waste heat, usually into the table, but also the jug, you know, it's pissed away as waste heat, so this is our waste. There. The other one is actually my finger, <laughs> and if you were to press against something that's transparent, so you get this fucking tub here, and you press against it, you can see that your f the blood has been pushed out of your finger. In other words, there's a compression going on. It's actually a pumping loss, is that? Squidging all the blood out of my finger. But let's just say my finger's something more rigid like this or something like that. The atoms will be compressed, right? They will move when this hits this. Because I might fucking push something with a force of, you know, one newton, right? One newton of force. But to an atom, <laughs> Oh, to 50 atoms, 100 atoms, 10,000 atoms, one newton is shit loads of force. Fucking shit loads, right? Absolutely shit loads. So, um, just by moving it with my finger and the compression at, the, at the, the contact point, if it was fucking hardened steel, if it was diamond, there'd still be some kind of compression there, and that is waste heat. Weirdly enough, it's not just in. So let's just say we have our jug. What does our jug look like? It had a, a lid like that, right? Let's just say you have our jug like this, right? And I push it with, I don't know, said finger, fingernail, finger, right? We see a, a deformation here at the finger, right? So you know most of your waste heat's in there, it's compressing most of that. And there'll be some slight deform, uh, deformation of the plastic. But let's just say we hit it with a steel rod, you know what I mean? This is a steel rod with a diamond tip on it, or you know, a carbide tip on it, then it'll be this that deforms, you know what I mean? Whichever's the weak, whichever's isn't as rigid will deform, but you will still get some deformation somewhere. And that moving of atoms, that moving of molecules and atoms and stuff, there's waste heat in that process. So, no matter what you do, there will always be waste heat. Um, you know, someone might say, yeah, but in space, blah, 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 with a rocket engine. Well, the rocket engine's spewing out heat that can be seen as thermal radiation, but that isn't propelling it forward. The exhaust bell gets hot, but that heat isn't propelling it forward. You know what I mean? It's actually ejecting the mass out that is propelling it forward. So things just getting hot do not propel that forward. You know what I mean? So, with every process, there's always waste heat. So, back to our cylinder example at the beginning. When you compress that, that makes sure, as we all know, it's going to get hot and that heat is going to transfer from the gases inside the cylinder to the cylinder wall, to the piston, to the combustion chamber, stuff like that, to the gas its actual self. Now, when you apply that heat to the gas it itself, then that gas has that energy and that's going to transfer that momentum to the piston, but it's also going to transfer it to the cylinder walls, the cylinder head, it's also going to pull the, the bolts, the, you know, the cylinder bolts, the head bolts, it's going to pull them in tension because of the pressure, so on and so forth. So even if you don't ignite the mixture, you are never getting a 100% return. It is the same, and I'm, I'm going to show you in a future video, it is the same with exhaust valves, uh, with valve springs. So basically, if you just push and actuate an, a valve spring, I'll get the thermal camera out and we will see, not by hand, I'm going to make a mechanism for it, you will see the heat and it's not friction because we're going to isolate it um, and you will see 
the, the heat in the spring just by deforming that spring and it springing back. There's always a loss. If you do fucking anything, there's a loss. It's because nothing is converted perfectly. So even electrical motors and stuff, when you fire, you know, billions and billions of electrons um, down those power lines, there is a resistance. If there is a resistance, there is waste heat. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Hence why superconductors are such a what thing. But then saying that the energy that you put into cooling down the nitrogen to go to liquid nitrogen temperatures so you can use the superconductors, that's a waste in itself. Room temperature superconductors are where it's all at. If they'll ever find any, who knows. Proper tangent there. Yeah, kind of related. Hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.